So in the last video, we took a look at the derivative of the exponential function, but we, it was kind of a, a more long drawn out video explaining why the derivative was what it was. Well, uh, we're not going to do that this time. This time it's going to be a little bit shorter. Uh, we're just going to know or say that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. All right, so we know that much. But here, here's the problem, though. Very rarely will we just have e to the x in a function. We're much more likely to have something like e to the 4x plus 1, there'll be other things going on other than just e to the x. And, and here's the, the downside to that. The derivative of e to the 4x plus 1 is not e to the 4x plus 1. Um, so th this idea doesn't work for every function. So you might say, well, well Devin, that's, that's pretty worthless to have this rule if we can't extend it to any other functions. Well, in fact, we're actually very, very close. It's really just a, a small detail that we need to, to hash out. The rule that we're missing here when you have something other than x in the exponent is the chain rule, right? Because what we have here is an outer layer, which is the e part, and an inner layer, which is the exponent. So if we remember how to handle the chain rule, then we can take derivatives of any exponential function and not just the very limited just e to the x. So here's what it looks like. All right, if we want to take um, the derivative with respect to x of e to the u, where what I'm doing here is u can be any function of x. It could be the square root of x. It could be 4x minus 1. It could be sine x. It could be x cubed. It doesn't matter. Any function of x the derivative would be this by the chain rule. It would be the derivative of the outside, the exponential part, which that's the part that we copy. So it'd be e to the u, right? e to the u. But then what do we do with the chain rule? We follow this with the derivative of the inside. Now what's the inside here? Well here the quote unquote inside is going to be the exponent. So here we have e to the u times du dx. That's the derivative of u with respect to x. So let's try this one here. The uh, derivative of e to the 4x minus 1. Well, yes, in a sense, the derivative is e to the 4x minus 1, but we're not done yet. We're going to follow that with the derivative of the exponent. In this case, the derivative of 4x minus 1 is 4. Um, now, that's the correct answer. Now, normal convention says that if you have a constant or just a single term, we typically write, like to write these at the front just because it looks better. So we're going to write f prime of x equals 4 e to the 4x minus 1, and that's the best way to leave it. So long story short, you keep your exponential term. You always copy the exponential term. And you simply follow it with the derivative of the inside. Now, is that something new and different than what we knew before? Absolutely not. No, it's just an extension. The derivative for e to the x would be e to the x times, and what's the derivative of x? Well, it's just 1. So really, it was there all along. We just never wrote it just because it was a number 1. All right, let's try a couple other examples. All right, um, let's see here. Next example is going to be a trig example. This one's got trigonometry in it. What's the derivative of e to the cotangent of x? Well, again, there's that exponential term, so I'm going to copy it, e to the cotangent of x, followed by the derivative of cotangent, which will be negative cosecant squared x. Now, if you look at that and say, oh, man, you know, um, Devin, I don't really remember all that. Uh, I put this example in here on purpose um, for your trig derivatives. Um, most people remember the derivative of sine and cosine and then forget the other four, the derivatives for tangent and secant and cosecant and cotangent. So make sure to do your due diligence and get some flashcards. Flashcards are a great help to keep remembering the derivatives of all your old trig functions um, because they're going to continue to show up for the rest of the course and uh, we don't want to forget them. All right, so in closing, the way we would leave this problem is negative cosecant squared x. We'll move that term to the front e to the cotangent of x. All right, last example, e to the square root of x. So the square root of x is like x to the 1 half. So the derivative of this function would be e to the square root x, right? And then on some scratch paper, I'm not going to work out all the details, but this derivative of x to the 1 half would be 1 half x to the minus 1 half, which simplifies as 1 over 
to root x. And so you'd have to do a little algebra to, to see that, but um, just for time's sake, I'll just go ahead and simplify that for us. So the final answer, the derivative, would be e to the square root of x divided by 2 root x, right? So we can take any exponential derivative now in conjunction with the chain rule.